Actually, thank you, sir. I was in the Northern Ireland Assembly yesterday. Uh, I, I met a whole number of ministers there. And I, I spent two weeks in the Scottish referendum. I'm half Scottish. Um, I think it would be quite the opposite, because if the UK leaves the EU, um, and Scotland then attempts to leave the UK, they will have to reapply to the EU. And it was already a major issue in the referendum campaign, uh, and the legal advice was that actually they would still have to apply, but it wasn't clear. The SNP claimed that you know they would continue as a member of the EU um, if they left the UK. But the point is, I, I can tell you, I, you know, I, I'm in the ECR group. We've got Poles, we've got um, Flemish, um, you know, we've, uh, we've got a whole range. Everyone has a separation problem. Uh, Spain, Catalonia, Barcelona. What is the likelihood? It's actually been said in the Spanish Parliament that they would not, they would vote against Scotland being allowed in as an as a EU member. I think if we left the EU, uh, they'd look to the British Union, uh, as they did in the 1950s. You know, there were more Conservative MPs in Scotland in the 1950s, when the EC, we were members of the EC, than Labour. And I think we'd get back to that position because the British Union, which actually, frankly, pays for a lot of it, uh, would be stronger as a result. And in fact, if we want to keep the UK together, the British Union, then we should leave the European Union. Okay. Um, so it's good to see you here, High Commissioner. Um, I'm on the Trade Committee of the European Parliament, and I'm the lead MEP for the Parliament with the India Free Trade Agreement. Um, Lord Hannay paints a very rosy picture of the trade deals. I see the reality. Um, India's taken seven years to negotiate. Nothing's happening at the moment. They've just cancelled the, the uh, summit, Anglo, the EU-India summit in Brussels. Um, meanwhile, uh, little Switzerland, little Iceland, do trade deals with China. They're much more flexible than the EU. The EU's getting slower and slower. It's 10 years now, uh, on average, to negotiate a trade deal. ACTA failed. The, um, anti-counterfeiting trade agreement failed in the European Parliament. TTIP is in trouble, the uh, US uh, deal. Canada, I'm, I'm dealing with that as well. Now, that's a very good trade deal, I'm pro-free trade, but you know, it, it nearly founded on the EU's insistence on, on telling Canada about its human rights. And it delayed it for two years. I'm not making it up, it nearly failed as a result of that. And they want these uh, emission standards being forced on these countries as well. So they're wandering into politics and they're actually neglecting trade. And what we should be doing, if Britain was an independent country again, we could, send, uh, we could sign up to EFTA deals, we could sign up to EU deals, because South Korea would just say, we'll run it on till we discuss it further. That's what would happen. So, uh, you know, I think we could do a better deal with Bangladesh. Uh, with, with a better deal for you and help you out if you are an independent country. Uh, well, I talk obviously to my colleagues in the European Parliament about this, and I think they, if Britain left the EU, they would demand more reform from the EU and maybe consider doing a similar deal uh, themselves. Um, I mean, we are out now anyway. There's a Eurozone that's getting closer and closer. Economic and political union is what they want. These two gentlemen don't tell you the real agenda of the EU which is a super state, the United States of Europe. And, you know, it, it, it's very overt now. Why did the President of the European Commission demand a single army just last week? This was voted down uh, at the Council in November or December 2013 by the British government, and now it's back again. There's an agenda to create a super state. You have an anthem, you have a flag, um, now they want an army, you have a parliament. That's the real agenda, and I think if you're talking geopolitical, this is not a good state. I don't think the EU is not actually doing what is right in the world. It's not a good model, um, and we need a, a freer Europe, a Europe of nation states. I mean, they're all actually called for. Uh, we need a different model. So I think by leaving the EU, we'd force reform. Um, I don't think it's for Britain, though, by the way, to tell other nation states what's in the best interest. If they choose because they've got far greater trade with the EU to remain a member of it, then so be it. It should be down to the nation states. But, you know, the, the fact, you know, again, there's two gentlemen saying what a wonderful success the EU, EU is. It's gone from 36% of GDP in 1980 to 20% now. 
and it's falling down to 16% as predicted. You ask the Greeks and the Spanish, 60% youth unemployment. If it's been a great thing, no, it hasn't. It's causing a lot of misery. The model doesn't work. It's too centralized. It's too bureaucratic. We need a new start. Great question. Um, I was going to talk about Ukraine. Go ahead. Uh, um, yeah, I, I know Ukraine. I collect Ukrainian art. Um, and I've been to Kiev and to Crimea. I showed the Soviet fleet, actually, about 10 years ago. Uh, but I would recommend that now. But um, yeah, it's a very sad situation. But I would point to, I think the EU has really badly handled Ukraine. And let me explain why. There's, Ukraine was offered through my trade committee a, tr um, a trade agreement and an association agreement. Trade agreement would have been fine. I think Russia would have put their nose out of joint, but they would have lived with that. But the association agreement actually has within it things like you know, Ukraine should join a common foreign security policy of the EU, uh, joint military maneuvers. Um, I think, you know, Ukraine is a free country and we should defend that. And, um, you know, they're good people, the Ukrainians. And I don't like how Russia's behaved. I don't like Putin. But I think it was very badly handled because you are in the Russian fear of influence. And if you you know, you're pushing them to sign up association agreements, and by the way, you know, obviously other areas like Georgia or whatever are signing association agreements, then I think it is destabilizing potentially, and it needs to be handled very sensitively. And I don't think we uh, need it to have got into this mess. Um, but the EU, uh, and, and, and frankly, some of the external action service people talk of a clash of empires. That's a quote, a clash of empires, and Europe must show its strength. And if you think that Europe's about creating peace, which it should be about, uh, this is an example of where it's actually destabilizing and done quite the opposite in my view.